So what you're going to find through your MS journey is, particularly on social media and through email, family and friends sending you stuff about an MS cure or a new way of managing MS or whatever the case is. And it can be really confusing because some of the time those treatments aren't even available yet. So there's five different stages of research and clinical trials that a drug or a management system needs to go through before it ends up in our bodies or us using it day by day. And by understanding where research fits, you can actually look at an article that comes through or is sent to you and start to work out, should I be listening to it? Should I pay attention to it? So I find MS Research Australia a really great place to go if someone sends me something. So if it's anything of any significance, MS Research Australia will report on it and they'll report on it in a balanced way, telling you exactly where it is in terms of its stage, when we're likely to see it come to us, or whether it's just, you know, a hypothesis at this stage. So MS is a really complex condition. It involves the brain, it involves the immune system, um, it involves the whole body. So we have to cover all those areas um, in terms of research. So we have immunology, looking at the immune system. We have neurobiology, looking at the brain, the nervous system. Um, and then as well as um, tackling those areas, people also have challenges in, in living with MS on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need research to help um, work out how we can best support people with MS, um, rehabilitation, physiotherapy, etc., cetera, um, while we're trying to find the cure. Research also takes place um, across a whole spectrum. Before it gets to you in the clinic, um, there's a lot of steps that research has to go through. There's fundamental discovery science happening in the laboratory, and then that kind of progresses through to preclinical research where we're testing our ideas in models of MS in the laboratory. And then ultimately, if, if that shows promise, it'll move through into clinical trials. So research can take a while, and sometimes it has to cycle through those phases um, as well. It has to go back and forth from discovery to the clinic and back to, back to discovery science again. Um, all the time we're learning things in the clinic, in clinical research that help us go back to the mechanisms of MS and really target it from a very um, biological perspective to improve medications and improve the way we treat it. Um, and likewise, discoveries are always being, being made in the laboratory, but they have to go through those steps. And it's really about making sure that we're on the right track and that um, we're developing treatments that are not only effective, but also safe for humans. So when you hear um, about the media reporting on research breakthroughs in MS, it's really important to have a look at that research and place it in that spectrum so that you can really understand, is it at the early phases, is it still being tested in the laboratory, but it's really exciting? Um, or is it already in a clinical trial? Or has the clinical trial finished and it's shown promise? So. The media will report on all of those different stages of research. And one thing that MS Research Australia does is actually we will put that information on our website as well. We will um, put the background to all of those research discoveries on our, on our website so that you can have a look at where in the research spectrum that research is at and how exciting it is and how far away from having an impact in the clinic it is. I'm an immunologist and our research seeks to understand the effects that sunlight has on our immune system. This is important for MS because the immune system plays a really important role in causing MS, um, making MS worse, um, and sunlight, being an environmental factor, um, is a major risk factor for multiple sclerosis. Immunology is the study of our immune system and how it works. Traditionally, this is focused on the role of the immune system in fighting infections like bacteria and viruses, but can also be the cause of other diseases. MS is one of those diseases. So our research is important for people with MS because we know that the environment, like sunlight, can raise or lower your risk profile for developing MS. So the more sunlight you get, the less likely you are to develop MS. Um, and the drugs that we have that work the best also target the immune system. So our research will benefit patients with MS because our research seeks to understand how sunlight affects the immune system. Using that information, we aim to design um, and develop new drugs that target the immune system to, to treat MS. The time frame for the design and development of drugs is fairly long term. Five to ten years is the conventional time frame for, for these sort of um, activities, which requires long-term investments of funds and time. 
Um, there are some aspects of our research that is uh, almost immediately translatable. By understanding the effects of UV and sun on our immune systems, we might have, be able to design new ways to modulate um, people's behaviour in the sun, um, or even artificially replicate the sun um, in a dermatology clinic. So I'm an epidemiologist and public health physician, and my research looks at how diseases are distributed, so how many new cases of diseases of a disease there is and where those new cases are happening. And then I also look at the causes of disease. So we try to understand what the determinants of a disease are. And then we also look to try to understand what are the risk factors for that disease. Or we, we think about prevention, so we think about um, actually preventing the disease or in people who have the disease, preventing disability from that disease and, and really optimising health. One of the really fascinating things about MS is that over the last 50 years, the incidence, so the number of new cases in the population has been increasing in a lot of parts of the world. And the other thing that we see in MS is that the incidence is increasing differently depending on where you are in relation to the equator. So the incidence is higher further away from the equator than it is closer to the equator. So that sort of unusual distribution makes us think, you know, what can be driving that? And the rising incidence over recent years suggests that there's maybe some environmental factor that is driving that. We know that there are genetic, there's a genetic risk to multiple sclerosis. But for a genetic risk to be driving a big increase would take years and years and years. It would take, you know, multiple generations to get an increase from genetic causes. So that suggests that there's some environmental cause that is driving these patterns that we're seeing. The important thing about that is if we can understand what those environmental causes are, we can get rid of those environmental things and we can prevent MS. So my research seeks to understand the environmental risk factors for the onset of multiple sclerosis and then for um, increasing disease or disease activity and progression of the disease. I'm a neuroscientist and I carry out research trying to understand what happens in the brain of people with multiple sclerosis. So neurobiology is a study of the cells in the brain and how they communicate and the different sorts of signals that affect their behaviour. Understanding neurobiology is really important for people with MS because we now have a number of drugs that can regulate the immune component of multiple sclerosis. What we really don't have are drugs that can yet regulate the, or repair the damage that happens in the brain of people with MS. Now, in MS, what happens is that you really lose insulation in the brain. So if you think of the brain as being like an electrical cable, it needs to be insulated in order for it to carry the information to its final destination. And that insulation breaks down in people with MS. And so what I do is I study a population of stem cells that are in the brain and we try and find ways to push those cells to make new insulating cells to repair that damage. So I think this treatment is going to be really important for people with multiple sclerosis. At the moment, we can make a very large impact on the immune component of the disease, but the research that I'm doing is really going to lead to new treatments that can repair the nervous system damage caused by multiple sclerosis. And I really think that this is an area of research that's expanding. A lot of effort is going into this area and that we really should see some output from this in the next five to 10 years in terms of new treatments that can really prevent the brain damage and repair what has already occurred. Some of the research being carried out by my team involves significant national and international collaboration. These are big problems to tackle and we're not taking them on on our own. In some cases, the researchers in Australia and members of my team really are the best placed people in the world to carry out some of this research. But for other areas that we're investigating, we can't do it alone. And so we've brought on national and international collaborators to really try and tackle those problems. So we work with uh, researchers across Australia and across the world. We have collaborations in Western Australia and in Canberra where we look at the effects of UV on patients who are at very high risk of developing MS. We have collaborations in Europe 
Well, we also look at the effects of UV on the immune system of patients exposed to artificial UV sources. Funding from MS Research Australia has meant I can support students and staff to translate the discoveries that we're making um, at the bench to patients who need it. The research that um, a lot of our work has been, been based on was a study called the Oz Immune Study, which ran between 2003 and 2006 and has, is now ongoing. That's run through the University of Tasmania, but it also involved people, um, centres in Queensland, Newcastle, Geelong, and in Tasmania as well as in Canberra. So there's a really um, large, enthusiastic group of people around the world and people are really collaborating very closely together to try and solve the mystery of what, if, what is MS and particularly for people with MS to minimise disease activity and progression. Obviously the ultimate goal of MS research is to find the cure, to find a way of stopping the MS in its tracks and reversing any damage that's already been done. MS Research Australia and Australian researchers generally collaborate widely across the world. It's about making sure that we're all pulling together in the same direction, that we're exploring all the important avenues um, and that we're working together to, to get that work done as efficiently and fast as possible. I'm really interested in MS research because there's so much going on at the moment. The way I keep up with MS research is that I register with particular websites that interest me. MS Research Australia and the Progressive Worldwide Alliance, um, they're reputable so I tend to um, wait for those publications to come out. When I was first diagnosed, my neurologist said to me, you're so lucky you've been diagnosed today and not even five years ago. I thought she was just saying that to make me feel better, um, but it's true. So much has changed and so quickly and every week new things are being discovered. Many years ago, when I first started writing about MS, I actually put a Google alert on MS and so I tend to read a lot about research and I've been able to uh, turn that into a bit of a passion for science writing as well. But all types of MS uh, research interests me. We're looking for cures, we're looking for treatments, we're looking for repairs. In, in the five years that I've been diagnosed with MS, the landscape of research has changed tremendously. And, and that should give you a lot of hope. I recently just completed a MS trial uh, with actually the University of Sydney. Uh, I'm happy to help any way I can in, when it comes to research for MS. Uh, the whole idea behind it was looking at people with MS and when you exercise, what your body temperature does. I was put in a climate controlled chamber for a couple of hours and I was made to exercise um, in a really cold room and a really hot room. Um, and it's really interesting to see sort of the difference between my body temperature and also how much you sweat too with somebody who's got MS. I found out about the trials by going on the MS Research Australia's website and I clicked through the links to the trials page. I think it's really important to get involved in clinical trials. Uh, it's really good to be able to give back um, to actually MS research. Um, and it's also great to be able to learn something about your own body as well. Um, and then also be able to find out what the end result is. Any kind of MS research interests me because it's all finding out about the disease. The more we know, the more we can help people with MS and figure out what's going on in our bodies. And hopefully one day we'll get the big one and we'll stop the disease altogether. And that would be fabulous. My name is Dr Litsa Kiropoulos and I'm a senior lecturer in clinical psychology at the University of Melbourne. So my area of research is in depression and anxiety disorders and uh, specific, specifically I'm looking at um, developing a specialised psychological intervention for the treatment of depression in individuals who've been newly diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Certain psychological therapies have been shown to be more effective than others and one of these type of therapies is called cognitive behavioural therapy. With this type of therapy we're interested in looking at an individual's thinking patterns and their behaviours and seeing where we might be able to make some changes to help them um, overcome some of the depressive and anxiety symptoms that they may be experiencing. So if you are newly diagnosed, I would recommend you seek out information and social supports um, to find out more information about your diagnosis and, and also whether you might be experiencing depressive and anxiety symptoms. You know, there's been a lot, of, a lot more research currently, more research and more services are available for individuals.
There's loads of misinformation about MS, and it can be very confusing. So we want to bust some of the myths that are out there. Myth. Clinical trials are experimental, and I might not benefit from participating. There are many benefits in taking part in a clinical trial. These trials are not just limited to testing new therapeutic drugs, but they could be testing new physiotherapy or psychological interventions. Some of the benefits of taking part in a trial means you could have access to the newest treatments earlier, extra monitoring and care from doctors, nurses, or other clinical staff. Plus, it also helps other people with MS in the future. A great way to get involved is visiting the MS Trials website. I recently did a clinical trial which involved exercise and heat, which for me was really interesting and rewarding. The first part was finding out about how exercise benefits MS, but also how to manage heat and how heat can impact MS. I'm a thermoregulatory physiologist, and the area of research that I work in is looking at the way that humans respond uh, to exercise in hot environments. So one of the clinical trials that we're performing at the moment is looking at the efficacy of cold water ingestion for improving exercise tolerance of people with MS uh, in the heat. So we're looking to see if uh, drinking 250 millilitres of cold water every 15 minutes uh, improves how long people with MS can uh, continue exercising in a 30 degrees Celsius environment. So our main finding was that in people with MS, cold water ingestion relative to drinking a warmer fluid resulted in a 30% longer exercise duration in the heat. So this had clear benefits in terms of helping people with MS exercise for longer with the same sensations as they did with a warmer fluid. But interestingly, what we found was that despite the cold water ingestion extending exercise tolerance for people with MS in the heat, it didn't actually cool their core body temperature down, which really now starts to help us question what the real underlying mechanisms are responsible for heat-related fatigue in people with MS. So the reason it's important for people with MS to get involved in our trials is because 90% of Australians living with MS suffer heat-related fatigue. And um, uh, heat is a significant barrier in the everyday lives of people with MS. So our research is really trying to find uh, effective ways to help people deal with these symptoms. And we can only do it if people with MS participate in our studies. MS Research Australia not only funds and facilitates research, we educate, we advocate and we empower people with MS. We do that by funding the best quality research available anywhere in the world. We also have a wealth of people with MS who sit on our boards, our committees, even within our staff, to make sure that whatever we're doing is perfectly aligned with what people with MS want. So there's been incredible progress in MS, and I believe that the progress we've seen over the last 10, to 10 years will be increased at least five to tenfold over the next 10 years. So I believe we'll be able to see some real impacts on not only trying to repair the damage done, but also being able to, pre to prevent MS. And that's really critically what we need to do in the next 10 years. There's plenty of ways to get involved with us. One of the major ways is through Kiss Goodbye to MS, which is a, a wonderful platform empowering, educating younger people about MS. You can also be part of our clinical trials or get information from our website, which really is there to help bust some of the myths that are around about MS so you can really understand the disease itself. Your view is that you have MS right now. My view is that over the next 10 years, we'll have probably double the amount of treatments for relapsing MS. We'll have significantly increased treatments for progressive MS. We'll have a wonderful handle on how we can both protect and potentially repair the damage done by MS. And we'll have a really good understanding of prevention. MS Research Australia is collaborating with people with MS to produce this video series that holds the information that they wish they had when they were first diagnosed.